Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here and welcome to my messy desk again. Um, I am a day late on my tutorial. I'm sorry. The sun was shining. My husband said, let's go for a drive. There was a flea market. And so, yeah, I went. And then by the time I got home, I just didn't feel like sitting down and starting a video and then doing all the editing and loading it up and stuff. So I figured, well, I'll just get a fresh start in the morning. So I'm, I'm working on several segments of uh, ideas that um, I want to share with you over the next little while. And I like to do things a little bit differently. You know, there are so many people showing you how to make a journal, how to um, make tags, how to do um, uh, journal cards, that kind of thing. So it's, it's very repetitive. So I'm trying to do things that are a little bit different that you can incorporate into your journals or show you different ways that you can repurpose things into your journals and, and just take it on a different level and show you something different. So over the next uh, few months, I'm going to be doing what I call series or, or playlists of, of, of in three different areas. And one of them will be to, to make uh, charms and dangles for your journals. Uh, I have a variety of styles that I can show you to do that. And one is going to be uh, making flowers and um, some really cool floral embellishments. And then another one is going to be um, showing you how to, to dissect, you know, clothing and other items, uh, fabric items that you can then repurpose into your journals. And when I say dissecting clothing, yeah, I take it all apart, stitch by stitch, I flatten everything out, I iron it, I, I take off the trims, uh, everything gets used, even the salvage edges of clothing. And if you're going to take apart something like that, you want to make sure that you, you um, use it all. Otherwise, it's still going back into the landfill. So I, I, I'm going to do some different segments like that or, or playlists um, so that we can have some fun doing different things. And uh, so today I'm going to start with the charms and dangles and I'm going to do a little bit in each area over the next little while and then then we will um, focus on the next one and then go back to the other one and and there, there's still going to be some organization videos coming out and also other repurposing videos using paper and, and ephemera. But I just wanted to change it up a little bit here and there and um, yeah, do things that you don't normally see or, or uh, haven't seen for a while, maybe. So um, one of the dangles we're going to be making today is a, is a paper clip dangle. It's not a paper clip. We're only going to use the paper clip as a base. And this is an example here of one that I've made. And it's got a tassel along the bottom and a little hanger. I haven't closed the hanger because I'm assuming that I'll either put it on a journal, um, on the spine of a journal, or hanging down the center of a journal. So this is just to tie it on with. Now, I use the paper clip inside here, but it's not a paper clip. You can't clip it onto something. You have to tie it on as a, as a tassel. It's, it's a dangle. So I'm just going to show you how I do those. I have several pieces started here. I'm using the larger, I think it's about a two inch paper clip and I only have a handful in this, this bucket to work with because I haven't found my paper clips yet. If you don't have one of these, they're annoying. Um, they're annoying, fun, annoying. They, um, they're magnetic trays. I picked them up at the dollar store in the kind of the tool section, kind of the you know, like screwdrivers and nails and that kind of stuff. And they're, they're metal trays or magnetic trays that can hold all kinds of things. So I have these, um, everywhere through my studio now, like for holding paper clips and for holding small tools, needles, pins all over the place. So, so it's great. If you drop it on the floor, you don't have to pay, play a 52 pickup with your pins or your, your, um, your, uh, paper clips. The only thing that's annoying is that anything that's on your table, uh, when you've got it close by sticks to it, but at least you won't be losing things on the floor. Ah, now I need that paper clip. So it's a, the larger paper clip that I'm using and you know, you can use the small ones too, but yeah, I'm not going to, they're just too putsky for me and too little. So I, I just 
cut up some strips of lightweight cardstock. It's nothing um, heavy duty. And in this case, I just had some stamps and I stamped uh, some, some words on here. You're really not going to see much of the, the original base. Um, but at the same time, you still don't want it to be something too contrasting or, or um, ugly compared to whatever you're putting on top of it. Uh, because there are going to be little bits that show through. So I, I had I had some just plain cardstock. I had some scrapbook paper that I cut. And I cut these into about a one and a half inch strip. Now normally I just, um, you know, I just wing it and cut it. But but for, for the sake of this video, I did cut some strips. And then I had another piece of scrapbook paper that was sitting on my desk. And I thought, ah, I'll just cut it up and use it. And this was just some packaging from, from the top of a package. I just cut it again to one and a half inch strips and I'm going to use this now for my, my, um, paper clip. So all I do is I, I put the paper clip on to the cardstock to hold it in place. And then I decide how wide I want it to be. And I, I like these to be quite wide cause I like to decorate on top of them. So I'm just going to fold it and pinch it a little bit as I go along. And I go about four times around. So now you can't see the paper clip at all on, on the sides. You just see it from the top and the bottom. And this becomes what you dangle and hang things from. So that's three times around. And four is just my magic number. I don't know. I just uh, choose four. And then I trim off the excess. And yeah, this goes into my scrap pile. It'll get used up somewhere. So I'm going to do this again with another one here sitting on, on my desk. And I'm going to use this, this um, piece of paper here. And this isn't a very big piece of paper. And I kind of like it the way it is. I like the numbers there. So I'm going to make this one a little bit narrower, I think. Oh, I was going to go this way, sorry. So I'm just going to pinch. And it doesn't have to be exactly four. It can be four and a half. Um, if you want to just use up the rest of the paper, that's fine too. And so this one's just a little bit narrower compared to the other one. So here you see here, there's the difference in size. And it's entirely up to you as to what size and how you want to, what kind of paper you want to use. And then I did one with the scrapbook paper as well. And this was just to show you, I've got one already made with another piece of paper that I stamped on. So I'll get this paper out of the way. I'm sure you can figure out from here how to uh, wrap the paper around them. My poor desk. Okay, so I'm going to open them up and I'm going to glue them all. Now I, I could use the hot glue, but I like the paper to, to really seal um, to itself. And it holds the... Um, Sorry, I just got to get my glue started here. And of course, because I'm on air. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just using a liquid glue to get in between the paper clip. If you can see that. And then I'm just going to fold it over on itself onto the paper and I'm going to do the same thing again going in and around the paper clip just like that fold it over and I like to squeeze so that the glue goes right to the ends of the paper because I don't really want any gaps in there there's going to be because of the lumpy paper clip but as much as possible, I want to get the gaps out of it. And the last and final one here. 
and then just pinching it and squeezing the glue so that it gets spread throughout. Your paper clip may have moved a little bit along the way. Just recenter it as you as you notice it, that it's moved. And it will it will eventually sit in one spot. And as painful as that was, I'm going to make you watch me do it again. The paper clip is moving around here. Now, these videos are just to show you that you don't have to go out and buy a ton of tools, a ton of jewelry parts um, to make your projects. That one was double glued. Shouldn't be talking while I'm doing this, but um, it, it's just a way to show you that, you know, you've got the stuff at home already. Don't go out and buy things, you know, unless you want to, of course. I'm not saying don't buy anything, but um, you don't have to buy to make these. Uh, a lot of times you'll find that you have the stuff to make them. And one more corner here to do and pinching it in place and because that was so much fun I'm going to make you watch me do another one and this is that little green one that I'm doing here Um, if there's other ideas that you would like to see being done, um, you know, please let me know. Uh, I've got no shortage of ideas and, and um, no shortage of areas that I could work in. Uh, the dissecting of a, a garment is a would be a really big series um, only because, you know, it would take me a whole day to take it apart and then to to uh, be committed to going through all the steps of using it up because I like to try to finish things I don't like to have them I get bored of the same color or or style and so I know if I don't use it all it's just going to go in the pile and I'm never going to use it again so I try wherever possible to use things and use them up whether it's giving part of it away or or um, making a journal cover like when I did with the scarves I, I like to use the entire scarf so that it's done and finished and I move on to something else I don't like to stay attached to anything and save it for anything because there's just so much out there to work with and I have tons of stuff to work with so um, if I do the, the garment, uh, series, I, I need some time to, to know that I'm going to work with it right to the end and, and take you with me right to the end of it so that you get to see all the different things that I do. So here's four different, um, uh, paper clip bases that are ready to go. Now I could, I could leave them like that and, and just add, um, you know, a couple of gems on the bottom, depending on what I have. And, you know, maybe a little, little, um, if you can see that, a little doodad in the middle or a charm or a little piece of broken jewelry or something. And, and I can call this finished and, and add a tie onto it and it's ready to go. Um, but for the, for this video, I decided I would just, um, show you my process of adding things on top of them so that they are more finished like this. Now let's start with this. Let's see. Let's start with this blue one. I've got that pashmina scarf that I'm going to be using on some of those uh, traveling notebook journals that I'm making. So I figured I might as well make some tassels to go with it. And I had cut out a piece just to see if I liked it. 
So nothing fancy about this. No um, straight cutting. You can see that there's some little scrappy edges over here that are probably going to come off when I start gluing. So I'll just take them off now. But uh, no rhyme or reason to the cut. I want some of the original paper to show through a little bit. If it's, you know, if it's paper that's nice. And I'm just going to take and put a little bit of glue. My hot glue gun is ready today. And just glue this down onto here. Again, proceed with caution using your glue gun. But you are responsible for yourself if you get burnt. And I'm just going to close that off a little bit. Nothing fancy. And I've now added some fabric on top. So you can see already that we're not going to see much of the original paper that's underneath. You could ink, uh, distress the edges of this. You can go back, you can paint them. Um, I'm just going to leave them because it's just part of the, the um, bead itself. Now I've got some fibers here. I've got some blue lace. I could take a piece of this lace and glue that around. Um, I'm going to start with the fibers, I think. Now, I like this one. I, it's kind of a hairy eyelash trim. And it's got another um, trim inside of it. Kind of a, I call it a ladder trim. It looks like a little ladder to me. You can see that. But they're, they're together. And I'm going to add a little bit of gold because I have this gold cord here. And just a little bit of glitz to it. Now to make it easy for myself, I'm just tying a knot in all three of them to hold them together. And I'll leave those little hairy bits on there. And I'm not going to put much. I'm going to start at the back side. I'm not going to put very much. Just enough to kind of hold that knot in place. And I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times. I think that's pretty good like that. Uh, maybe I'll just do a knot this way. Should have re-knotted it before I finish the wrapping. But we like to do things a little backwards sometimes. And again, where the knot is, I'm just going to trim off a little bit of a fringe at the end. But the knot just makes it easy to glue everything down all at once and not use a lot of hot glue on your project. And there we go. Now it's a little too hairy for me, so I'm going to trim it down. I don't want it sticking out quite that much. But now I've got it covered with the fibers. And I have a little piece of this trim here. Okay. This one's undone. Now this was a salvage edge on a, on a little girl's dress that I had cut up. And I'm just going to cut off this little flower part that's on here. It's a little too chunky. Take some of that away. And add a little bit of glue into the center. And this just builds it up and makes it look a little bit more dimensional instead of flat. You could glue pictures onto here. You could, you could uh, glue charms. 
uh, beads. You know, I could have added this bead on top. I still might. We'll see. And so now I'm just going to add a little bit of a piece onto the back side as well. I don't like that point sticking out. And this is just a little bit of mesh netting that I'm adding onto here. So you can see already that this paper clip is changing quite a bit already. Now I'm making mine bohemian shabby style. You can cover these very nicely with pieces of lace and you know nice uh, pretty fabric and then add a you know a little a flower or a rose in there. But this is my style. This is what I like. So so you're going to see mostly this type of finish to them. But it's not to say that you couldn't take a piece of lace and wrap around and do one with lace. And, you know, you could have a nice little heart on here or, you know, some, some buttons glued down. So there are lots of options uh, for decorating these that are in a shabby uh, vintage style or a boho style. But once you've got your, your um, bead itself decorated... Now it's, it's just a matter of making things to, to dangle from it. Now I had taken this bead and I was showing you that I could glue it down the center, but I could also have it dangle from the bottom of this. But that's for another day. I'm, I'm going to show you uh, some fun things that we can do with making dangles and having these um, on our projects. Uh, so I'm going to do a tassel on the bottom of this one, just like I did with this one. And to make a tassel, I wanted about a five inch tassel along the bottom. And so again, I just grabbed some fibers that I had handy and that were in the colors I wanted to work with. And I've got this wool and you could do this with ribbon. Um, you can cut up uh, fabric strips. If you can find the end of your ribbon, you're doing really good, Kim. Where did it go? Must be here. This is how I operate. This is how I work all the time. Okay, I think I found the end here. Now I like about a five inch long tassel and that's the, the length of the one I have here. Oh my word, what have I done? Um, okay, I'm not gonna subject you to all this. I'm just gonna cut a new piece. I will use that piece, don't worry. Okay, so I've got an end here now to work with and I've got this end. So I've got two different, one is a wool fiber, one is that eyelash trim. And then I've got some of this gold thread. So I'm just gonna take the three of them together and because I want about a five inch long tassel here, I have a piece of uh, heavier weight cardboard and it could be anything. You could have a um, a piece of plastic. You could have a plastic lid. You can have some cardboard. Anything you want to wrap your around for your tassel. And just holding all the ends together, I'm just going to wrap it around here. I think about three times. I think that'll be plenty for my tassel. So I'm just going to cut the end off. So I've got it wrapped around on both sides three times I went around and then just kind of holding it close to the middle. I'm going to take my scissors and cut, cut the end that was um, still attached. Now you can also make these lying out flat if you want. Um, but now I have my tassel that I'm going to put on my project. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut an, a single strand of this finer gold thread. You can use anything. Um, it could be a piece of ribbon. And I'm going to tie 
the tassel in the middle. Can you see that? So I've laid all the fibers and that looks like it's about the middle to me. And I'm going to tie that first to hold it and then tie it again in a knot. And then just taking my fingers, I'm going to finger comb the tassel a little bit. And I've got those two ends sticking up. And I'm going to take another piece of that gold thread. Now it could be crochet cotton, it could be ribbon, it could be um, thread from your sewing machine. And I'm just going to now make the head of the tassel by taking the two pieces and I'm going to wrap it around here a couple of times so that it's nice and tight. Can you see what I've done here? So I've wrapped it around nice and tight and I'm pulling it and I'm going to tie this into a knot as well. Now don't mix it up with the one you tied for the top of the, the tassel. And I try to make these pieces long enough that they also now fall into the tassel itself and become part of the tassel. And then you've got the other two pieces that are um, the, the very top of the ta tassel head. And I've got a few little stragglies that I don't like there either. So I'll just give it a haircut. And there is my tassel to add onto my project. And it's very simple. It just goes through the bottom of the paper clip. And tie in a knot. And you can either trim those pieces short or you can add some charms and some dangles onto here and your tassel base is done. So it's pretty simple and, and um, it looks really pretty, doesn't it? You could, you could add some, some, some beads on the bottom or charms or, or whatever to not waste this thread. You could, you could uh, make it into a bow or you could go back and, and wind it into your project or wind it around your tassel until you get uh, to the bottom. So there's lots of options for using these little ends and I'm going to leave mine because I'm going to wait and decide once I use this on a project. So then the top of the, the tassel is the same thing or the, the dangle. I would either cut a piece of thread or ribbon or I might use a jump ring um, or a bulb pin or a safety pin and uh, connect them together. But for now, I'm just going to tie that on here till I'm actually ready to use it. I could go one step further by adding, adding some kind of a glittery stone, which I don't have anything on the table, but I think you get the point of how this can be decorated quite easily. So my other one is right here. I did pretty much the same thing on this one. I put some braided trim. So I'm going to make another one uh, with you here. This one I started and uh, got as far as doing the trim on it. Again, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to save some of these to, to, um, and yes, this, these are big bags of dangles that I pre-make. So we will have a day where we do some of those, but Oh, I like this. So I could I could have several dangles hanging down from here. I see another brown one. It's kind of a browny gold color. Oh, here's a nice red one. So with with three beads on the bottom attached with jump rings or bulb pins, and it is ready to go. 
and I could just have a again another tie on the top of it. So that's another one that I'm going to make. And like I said, this could be left as it is and just have things added on to it. The same, I'm going to show you the same beads along the bottom here would look just as pretty all tied together to make my, my um, dangle. And uh, just to show you I, how I did the, the burgundy one. This is all part of my scraps that I'm using for my journals. These are all little bits that I've cut off. I, I keep them until I'm finished making the books and then these will either go into clusters or they will go into to, um, uh, snippet rolls. Um, just to give you an idea, there's a piece of a snippet roll where all those little bits would get added into it. Um, so I, I do use all of this stuff and, and I wait until I'm finished all my journals and I don't need any more little scrappy bits because sometimes I want to add something onto a tab or onto a pocket or make a little, little uh, focal point or a little cluster within, within a, a page. So I, again, I keep all of this until I am done, done, done my, um, my journals. But for, for this video, I'm going to just take a, you know, there is no rhyme or reason here. I'm just grabbing a couple of pieces. I don't need very long or very big pieces. And I've got this brown paper clip. That was the packaging I showed you. And I'm just going to wrap. These fabric strips all the way around. And this won't be exactly the same as the other one. It's, it's just to show you again that anything works. And so I don't even throw away the salvage parts of clothing because I use them as part of the process of making my journal and making the embellishments to go with it. And what's nice about this, this is part of that pashmina scarf and it's got a little bit of glittery stuff in it. And I'm going to build this one up. I want it to be a little bit more rounded. Now I could, I could have added a picture of a gypsy on here, which I've done in the past with some of my, my pieces. I could add, um, any other kinds of, of artsy pictures and stuff. It's just a, a fun way to use up these scrappy bits. I see, see I have a little piece of a teal thread in there from the last one. And I'm just going around and building this up. So I have a more rounded type of base. So now you can't even see the original fabric that I put underneath there with all of this on top. So you see it really doesn't matter what you put underneath. It's the decorating that you do afterwards. So I have some of this orange fiber and I really like this gold. And this is just a crochet, a gold crochet cotton that you can, you can buy I think this was quite a huge rule and, and I don't imagine I'll run out for a while. And I've got some, I think I'll use this. This I picked up at Dollarama just recently. And I like to torture myself with the ends of things. So let's see if I can find the end. Oh, yay. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're getting up there. Okay. So this is just to show you that, that I, um, how easy it is to, to make these from nothing. Okay. So I've tied the ends together and that just makes it easy to kind of maneuver them all. 
adding a little bit of glue. And wrapping this around multiple times. More blue fibers sticking out of here from the other one. Oh, and I did it again. I didn't tie a knot in it. Now, you don't have to tie a knot. I, I just do because... Um, it, it works nicely for me to catch them all. And I, I don't even mind the little ends hanging off of it. Like the little knot. I kind of like it. And then find a spot to glue. And trim off any edges there. So there is with the fibers wrapped around. So again, you're not seeing much of the um, original fabric that's underneath. And there is some of the paper clips showing, but that I could even go back and cover if, if I don't like it. But I kind of do because I'm, I'm thinking that I might take a small hole punch that I have and punch some holes in here for extra dangles to dangle down. It's a possibility. But then I have this braided trim You've seen me use this in several of my projects, but it's all because I'm working in the same fabric and, and um, collage bits. And I just took off about, you know, a little better than an inch. And I'm going to glue that along the front as well as along the back because these beads can turn around. And so you want them to look nice on both sides. And I'm just applying a little bit of glue. And then the same on the other side. So even that makes just a slight little difference and then it's the tassel so to do the tassel again I gathered all my fibers that I want to use in the tassel and my piece of cardboard on the to wrap around Going about three times around. And I'm going to take a piece of this gold. Now, you know what? I think this is thinner fiber, so I'm going to go one more round. And to do that, I'm just going to grab the three fibers. Yeah, I think I wanted one more. So you can see, you don't have to wrap it around a cardboard. I just do because it's doing them all at once. But I wanted an extra layer. And then taking a piece of this gold thread. Tying it in a knot. Holding both ends, bringing your tassel down and kind of finger combing it a little bit so it lays nice and flat. And then taking another piece of gold thread to make the top of the tassel. This is where you might want to grow an extra couple of fingers. Okay. 
pin, double knotting that piece. Now, if your tassel at the bottom has some straggly bits that are not lining up, you can give your tassel a little haircut so that it's more in line. Add any trims that you want to add to it or any beads or charms. and tie it onto the bottom of your paper clip. And so there is the start of my next one. I just have to do the little thing on the top. And like I said, I think I'm going to punch a couple holes here because the brown is showing. I could also probably just pull this down a little bit. But um, I think I like the idea of adding a couple of holes here and then uh, adding some little dangly things on top of that. But that's later on for something that I'll be doing off, off camera. Um, this was just to show you how you can take a paper clip, turn it into a really chunky bead and add a tassel to it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you will continue to stay with me in the different segments. Uh, I only plan to do one style of bead at a time so that you don't get overwhelmed. This is not hard to do. I'm sure you can sit down and make them with me uh, right away and, and uh, have lots of fun making them. And yeah, it's addicting. I just wish I had more paper clips on me to, to keep going, but uh, I haven't unpacked the, that box yet, so <laughs> I don't know where my paper clips are. I think I have to go out and buy some more. But I hope you enjoyed this and uh, I hope you understand where I'm going with the different segments and ideas and things that you can make for your journals and um, and have lots of fun and not spending a, a fortune and using different parts and bits to, to create with. So there you go. Somewhere on the table here is my blue one. I don't know where it went. <laughs> it's gone. Oh, here we go. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Have yourself a very creative day and a creative week. And I will be back into doing some more videos probably on Thursday. will be Thrifty Thursday. Slowly getting back into it. A little bit behind still, but getting better every day. So talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye for now.